Good morning. I'm Pete from Connecticut Post and Bean. Uh, the first thing we want to show you this morning is our new rotary cutting table. This has a lot of potential for post and beam framing, whether you use our T-Rex system or not. Uh, one of them is doing a square cut on, a, on an 8 by 8 beam. Measure the length of the beam. So all we have to do now is position our rotary table in the appropriate position. Run a couple of screws in to hold it in place. Then using our micro mill, which slides on the rotary table, we simply make our cut. The next thing I want to show you is our T-Rex slaughter. This is probably the most important tool in our T-Rex system. Uh, it allows you to cut a quarter inch slot into the end grain of this beam five and a half inches deep. So let me go ahead and do that. This, this rod here is an adjustable stop which allows you to position the bar in, for the correct depth of cut. Now that we've cut the slot in the center of an 8 by 8 beam, we're going to cut the slot in the center of a 6 by 6. And the way we do that is we have what we call a slide plate. It's a very hard plastic type material, very slippery. We simply screw that down to the top of the 6x6 and what it does, it picks the blade up one inch. So now we're going to be right dead center of the 6 inch beam. And that's how you do that. Uh, we have a radius on our T-Rex and basically what that does is it adds a lot of strength to the to T-Rex the itself. But what we have to do is we have to Cut a chamfer on the mouth of this slot so that the radius of the T-Rex goes all the way in to the beam. And the way we do that is we have a little router, a little laminate trimmer actually, and we've got a special adapter plate that fits on the little Makita router and it allows you to cut the, the, the chamfer on the mouth of that slot very quickly and easily. You can see that there's a slight chamfer now. And now when we what this does is it allows this T-Rex to go all the way into the beam right up even with the end grain, as you can see. The next step in this process is to insert the T-Rex, center it on the beam. We put two screws in here to hold it where we want it during drilling. It's very important that we put a witness mark, just a little pencil line on the T-Rex and on the beam. This T-Rex is going to stay with this beam until it is assembled. This is a drill jig and it simply allows us to position the holes in the proper location and to make the holes straight through the beam. So here we go. Center it on the T-Rex. Screw it down. And then I want to stop for a second and tell you how important it is to clean the flutes often. If you're going down, clean the flutes often. Get the chips out. If you're going to go down until you just spot the aluminum and you'll see why shortly. After you've drilled your holes with the drill jig, you're going to remove the T-Rex and we're going to take it over to the drill press to drill the holes in the T-Rex itself. As you can see, 
we've spotted these two holes and now we're ready to take our T-Rex over and complete the drilling on a drill press. We drilled a we drilled the T-Rex out on a drill press. We found that it's much easier and quicker. We're going to need a block to raise it up for clearance. It's much easier than trying to drill them out when they're in the beam. Now that we've drilled our holes on the drill press, we bring the T-Rex back over to the beam, push it in where it's supposed to be. Don't forget, line up your witness marks. Put a couple of screws in. This 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 T-Rex connector is going to ride with this beam now until it's installed in the in the building. In order to prevent the hole from being blown out on the bottom, we usually put a a block on the bottom of the beam here, clamp it, drill through. We get a nice clean hole on the bottom. The T-Rex is connected to the beam. Your frame is assembled using these half-inch diameter pins. You simply drive the pins into the hole with a small maul, and that ties the whole frame together. Let's get back to our rotary table. Uh, in the beginning of our demonstration, we showed you how to square cut an 8x8 beam. Our table was set at zero for a 90-degree cut. Now, we want to cut our rafters, and typically, we use a 10-12 pitch rafter, which is 40 degrees. All we have to do is set our rotary table on 40 degrees, tighten it down, and make our cut. when we cut our rafters, we make a rafter pattern so that we've got our angles on a piece of tempered masonite or plywood. The ridge cut, this is typically the seat cut, the bir what we call in the trade the, bir the bird's mouth cut. So we make a pattern. You'll mark the bird's mouth on the beam in the correct distance down from the peak. We know that's coming out. Okay, now we've cut the peak at 40 degrees. We've slid the uh, rotary table down, and it's still at 40 degrees because this part of the bird's mouth cut is the same as the peak. It's 40 degrees. Now we're ready to cut our bird's mouth. In this case, we're going to cut with the top of the bar. Pay attention to your cord. You don't want to cut the cord. Next step is to rotate the table. We know that if this is 40 degrees and we're trying to get 90 degrees, we know that that is going to be the complementary angle, which is 50. 50 and 40 makes 90. We've set our 50 degrees, and I've positioned the rotary table so that I can make the 50 degree cut now using the chainsaw again. There's your bird's mouth. Nice straight cuts, no overcut. Now that you've seen our T-Rex system, we hope we've impressed you. I think the most important thing I can say to end is to please feel free to call anytime. We're available and we're here to help. Thank you.